Hello everyone, my name is James Richard and I'd like to welcome y'all to the first episode of Books I've Never Read. The premise is pretty simple. It's a podcast where I sit down with a guest and we discuss one of their favorite books that I have not read before. This first episode was recorded with my good friend Tessa and we are discussing one of her personal favorites, Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. If you end up liking this episode and you want to discuss books, suggest a book for an episode, invite yourself on the podcast, or just yell at me in the public sphere, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at at It's Dirt Vonnegut. Again, that is at It's Dirt Vonnegut on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you enjoy this conversation. We're officially recording now. You good with that? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm nervous. All right. So, yeah, how do we start this? <clears throat> you tell me. That's a thoughtful question. Um, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, we're here to talk about your favorite book of all time. Gotta say, weird choice. <laughs> weird choice. Uh, when I asked you to do this, Totally surprised. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about Lolita, Victor Nabokov. Um, what is Lolita about? Vladimir. Vladimir. Fuck. <laughs> His name is Vladimir. God, I'm bad with Russians. All right, scratch that. Let's start over. <laughs> Remix. Okay. So we're here to talk about your favorite book, <laughs> which is fucked up. Uh, yeah, Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Um, what is it about? Um, sorry, that was a tooth smacker. I mean, it's all good. That. It's the Topa Chica. Okay, I move that away from They're going to sponsor us one day. <laughs> um, Lolita, what is Lolita about? It's a, I don't know. I feel like we're going to flesh that out as we go a little bit. I don't want to just like. Get Brief it. recap. Okay. Um, it's about a, a man, uh, who is obsessed with young women. Um, and he falls in love with one young woman in particular named Lolita. Lolita. Uh, that's not her actual name though. That's just what he calls her. Dolores? Dolores. Dolores is her name. Um, so he kind of worms his way into her life, becomes her stepfather, travels with her across the country, does all sorts of unnameable things. Um... And, you know, the interesting thing, this Vanity Fair quote on the front of my text uh, refers to it as the only convincing love story of our century. So let's, oh, wow. Let's wow. That is a hot, that. That is a hot, that. hot flex. Um, first off, just for people that don't know, how old is Lolita uh, in, in this book? When, when, when uh, uh, our man, who uh, is <laughs> Humbert Humbert. Humbert. <laughs> Which is uh, just uh, one fucking great name if I've ever heard one. Though not his real name, right? Like his, right, he's right, right. he's like telling there's his whole, story. There's a whole part in the text, and I was trying to find it um, the other day. There's a whole part in the text where he talks about how he kind of settled on Humbert Humbert as his alias. Right. Um, he just thought of one name and decided <laughs> to repeat it. Um, so yeah, Lolita. Which is, part of, like, which is part of what makes it really funny, though, right? Because like, like of all the names you could give yourself. Humbert. It's like, I think that adds to the comedy, so. Yeah, yeah, and it is, yeah, uh, like, yeah, I watched the movie last night. I have never read the book, obviously. Uh, movie was kind of fucked up. Yeah. Gotta say, made me feel some kind of way. <laughs> uh, a lot of it was just really fucking creeped out. Um, didn't watch the Kubrick version, because the other one was free, mm-hmm. and I had to rent, pay to rent the Kubrick version, and I'm all about the free stuff. Yeah. So it was the 97 version with Jeremy Irons, who was great and really fucking creepy. Um, and it, and yeah, the chick from Face Off was Lolita. I can't remember her name, even though we just looked it up. <laughs> Dominique Swain? Dominique Swain. Think, that was her I name. I think all you need to know is that she was in she Face Off. She was in Face Off, yeah. And the dude that directed it, I watched the interview with him, too. His name was Adrian Lyne, and he was really kind of creepy, too. Uh, he did Nine and a Half Weeks, which is a weird movie, as well as Fatal Attraction. Mm-hmm. Um, French dude. It's kind of fucking weird. Came across weird in the movie. Pretended like it was like, oh, this is like a great story. Yeah. This is really cool. Yeah. Uh, 
it was not not cool and but it was fucked up it's fucked up i don't even know how to approach it because he's essentially she's 12 Mm -hmm. when they meet yeah um it's fucked up i just don't know where to go Uh, from it like why uh, why is this your favorite book first off we'll go with we'll start let's rewind why out of when i asked you to do this first book you said was lolita i was like "Ah." (laughs) you were you were i almost i was like this shouldn't be the first this should not be the first episode (laughs) i was gonna ask the whole concept yeah you were like um what about it makes it your favorite book um i will i'll preface this by saying that um I don't want anyone thinking I'm a real weirdo and that, like, this is just the be-all, end-all. I have other favorite books. I've got, like, ten favorite books. That's, okay? Yeah, no, that's Lolita's, fine. I won't, I won't lose, use your government name <laughs> in this. No one will know who it was who I'm talking to right now. Just call me Humbert. Humbert. I'll call you Humbert. Humbert. Uh, <laughs> so, I read this book, like, ten or eleven years ago. And I don't know if you have the same... Sensation, that's a weird word to use, but like when you read a book, and sometimes it's not even just the book itself, but like the context of reading it that. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. That sort of stands out. Yeah. So I think it was partially like the time and place when I read it originally. Um, But then I don't, like, if you read this book, like, this guy is like a master of language. Like, he he writes really beautifully. Yeah, I gotta say, because uh, I read some reviews of the movie version that I watched, and I read uh, quite a few of the original reviews from around like 1958, from like Time Magazine and The Atlantic, and they had published some excerpts of it, and like the prose is it's fucking great. Yeah. Like, in the way he talks, like it's just, I can tell it's written really good, which is probably why it's consistently considered one of the greatest <laughs> works of the English language yeah. of all time, even though Nabokov himself was like just shit on English, he was like, I should have written it in Russian. Uh, like he, he, Whatever, he was he in the States it, Butterfly Hunt and he like, needed something to do. He to was a, perhaps an amateur lepidopterist. <laughs> um, uh, and, which is weird because, yeah, uh, he said that he wrote the book while he was traveling hunting butterflies. Mm-hmm. Um, With his wife. And that he didn't himself was not, I think the direct quote is that he only had a writer's interest in nymphets, <laughs> which, which is, you know, uh, <laughs> and the, the, the real part of the book that was real and true to life to him was his love of essentially road trips. <laughs> Of like motels, like American motel culture, of the mid mid twentieth century, which I imagine was great. You know what I mean? It's like Route sixty six type shit. Right. Like you drive around. He said he's like um, he told Time magazine, "I would like to have a chain of motels made of marble. I would put one every ten minutes along the highway, and I would travel from one to another with my butterfly net." <laughs> it's a direct quote from him. <laughs> To yeah. Time Magazine. Um, so he didn't actually love nymphets. young teen girls, nymphettes. Supposedly. Supposedly. He just fucking loved hotels. And he wanted a reason to write about hotels. He hotel, wanted a reason so. to write about hotels, yeah. so he figured, why not have a guy repeatedly rape a 12-year-old girl across a chain of hotels? Um, because it is rape, because she's 12. Yeah. And, and then you can't, the word rape in the text. You can't consent. But then also, like in the movie, and I imagine, it, I don't know if it's the same way in the book, they made it, they put a lot of it onto her. Like she was like instigating a lot of it. Yeah. They, they kind of, it's it's vague in the text a lot of the times. Like you're not, um, like he's not just outright. It's not like super pornographic or anything, but there are moments in the text where they're describing like the way that she's kind of lying on him or sitting on him and like there's some weird implication there, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think that is that is a true statement. But obviously like the person in the wrong is gonna be the old ass. The man. fucking grown man is <laughs> he's, uh, uh, just taking advantage of a young girl. Right. And like why like, how did, we'll go back and I guess we'll start going over the plot. So how did he meet 
Lolita? Like, how did that how did that work? Or one, like, why do you think he's even attracted to just young girls? Um, he kind of describes that in the book. So I want to like first open my text here. Open, open your your master <laughs> text. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, where is where is he talking about this? Now? He talks about the there's like oh yeah. Uh, did she have a precursor? She did, indeed she did. In point of fact, there might have been no Lolita at all had I not loved one summer a certain initial girl child in a Princeton by the Sea. Um, so Annabelle. Talks, Annabelle. Annabelle. Yeah. Right. So he talks a lot about this. Like, do more initial. research. Do more research. <laughs> I'm very impressed. You like know more than I do. <laughs> um, you're telling like all these quotes from time. I'm like, what? Oh yeah, I got. I have a Google document full of fucking, <laughs> full of fucking quotes. I just got what's right here in my head. Um, so like, obviously. This Annabelle, he was a little more age appropriate, I think, at the time. Like, right, it wasn't weird. Like, like there occurred. right, if you're like twelve and you love another twelve or thirteen year old, yeah. it's totally fucking cool. <laughs> but if you don't ever like age out of that, and then you right. know you're fucking thirty and you still love twelve year olds, mm-hmm. maybe you're fucked up. Yeah, maybe you're fucked up. Right. Um, um, yeah. So that that was kind of where I think it it, it begins, and then it, it is. It's like he doesn't. He just doesn't age out of that that phase. Mm-hmm. So then he's just, just obsessed. Just obsessed. Uh, and he and he tries to mask it t- at times too. Like you know, he, he dates older women, <laughs> and he uh, he marries marries a, a woman. Then he ends up marrying Lolita's mom, which is how he kind of gains custody of her. Which was really fucked up. Yeah, it's really fucked up. Because yeah. um, she, what is it? She, she finds out that he actually loves. Yeah. Lolita. Right, right, right. right. I think that's... that's The movie, they zip through, like, what I imagine is the first... Because the book is is written in two parts. There's, like, a part one and a part two. Mm -hmm. So in the movie version, fucking part one is, like, the first, like, ten minutes of the movie. Uh, And then part two is, like... The, the okay. fucking road trip is where it's at. <laughs> True to Nabokov, yeah. it's mostly it about just the, cruising Route 66 yeah. and uh, a lot of emphasis on the hotels. Yeah. Um, Which I, I remembered vaguely from the first time I read it, the premise of the story, but I'm glad I reread it um, because I didn't remember all the hotels. There's a lot of focus on describing these hotels, and now I know why, and that's pretty interesting. Um... So yeah, tell me, so he married her mom and, and and then what happened? How did he gain, how did he go from, like how did he meet her and then go to gaining custody of her? Um, the mom essentially just like dies in a freak accident. But I think it was stemmed from, she like finds a letter or she finds something. I should know because I just read it like a week ago. I don't really remember that. Um, there's some event that occurs and then she's like going across the street to mail some letter and just gets like hit by a car. But she's like, like, like right in that moment before that happens is when she confronts him. She confronts him. him. Yeah. Um, so then for him, he's kind of like, dope, <laughs> I'm out of this shit. Right. And then does, <laughs> he, does he tell Lolita right away no, that she's he dead? No, no. He, hold, he withholds that information. Oh, that's she, even more fucked up. <laughs> It's even yeah. more fucked up. She's at summer camp. Like you do time. when you're 12. Yeah, as one does <laughs> when one is 12. Um, so she's at summer camp and he goes to pick her up and essentially just says, like, your mom's in the hospital, we gotta go. And then takes her to, like, the first hotel. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and the rest is history. Mm-hmm. So the, eventually, eventually, obviously, it comes out that her mom is dead. Um, but Lolita and the mom have kind of a, a weird relationship anyway. Like they like fight a lot, or they don't. They, yeah. cause they, like I said, that part in the movie version was like really all they like sped up through mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. up to that part, and the bulk of the movie was like once the mom is out of the picture, mm-hmm. um, which was weird. She just like died, and it was like not a thing. They're like, oh, she's dead now. <laughs> yeah. Like freak yeah. freak accident. Like she's she's dead. Yeah. Well, that's um, interesting because they don't. You never really get the impression that it like affects slowly to that much but there is one passage in the book where he talks about like lying in bed with her at night and she's just sobbing so i guess the impression you're 
supposed to go to that. Like, she's ge- actually genuinely, like... Right. I mean, she's but then, like years it, old, and her mom fucking dies, and then this guy just, like... It starts fucking her. Swoops in and takes... And, like... So I think you're, you're like, you... She's got a lot to cry about. She's she's not. She's sad. She's sad. Her life isn't easy, obviously. Um. So mom dies. Mm -hmm. Stepdad Humbert Humbert. Humbert Humbert rolls up. Rolls up, whisks her away on this road trip. Uh, What happens next? Where do they end up? Um. So they're all over the place, just road tripping. Road tripping across a bunch of well-described hotels. <laughs> well, well, he describes a Lolita's favorite type of hotel, um, which I can't recall at this point. So it's like wood paneled. I don't know. Um, so they end up eventually. There's this whole scene or this whole series of scenes where he's like thinks somebody's following them. And it goes into great detail about that. And I think ultimately, like, I, part of it is I think he's, like, obviously feeling guilt. Like, he realizes what he's doing right. is not cool. Which is weird. Because, like I said, it, it fucked me up. It makes, at least in the movie, and you said in the book also, you feel bad for him. Mm-hmm. Like, you genuinely do. You feel bad for him. Because, like, you can tell he's fucked up mm-hmm. about it. But then he's also, like, a rapist. Mm-hmm. So... Like, right. yeah, it's hard to feel bad about someone who's just objectively awful. Right. But that's what's interesting about this story, I think, um, is that in, in a weird way, it is like a love story. As Vanity Fair describes. As Vanity Fair describes it. On the cover of the <laughs> book. <laughs> Maybe our greatest uh, love story. <laughs> Um, uh, you like, I mean, you start to understand that this this man genuinely like loves this loves girl, this girl, and it's obviously not appropriate or right, and she probably doesn't have any say in it. Um, no, but it, well, in in the, the movie, like I said, she is she. They portray her as as being like an active participant mm-hmm. in this. Like she is. Like, there are, are, are scenes where they portray her as, like, she knows what she's doing to him. Mm-hmm. And there's even a point in time where it's, like, she starts using him, using sex to get money from him. Mm-hmm. Where he, like, thinks she's going to leave him. Mm-hmm. Um, which she should. She, she, she should have left him. Yeah. Um, and she does. She eventually does. Yeah. So how does that happen? How does that happen? And there's there's another dude in the shadows mm-hmm. who, like, you think Humbert Humbert is, like, the true lecherous one of the story. <laughs> but when, in fact, yeah. like, when is as bad as he is, there's someone that's even a little more shitty. Yeah. Like, who, does he pop up through the book a lot? Because uh, in the movie, he's, like, he plays, like, a constant from the very first hotel that they're at. Right to the end of the movie, he's like always popping up at random times, but it's like uh, Humbert never realizes that he's like, he's like in the background. Yeah, I think that's kind of... Um, Quilty is Quilty. his name. Yep. Old, Quilty. Old Quilty. Claire, old, old Claire Quilty. Yeah. A playwright. Yeah, a playwright. Um, Which is just a job you had in the 40s. Yeah. Oh, I'm just a playwright. Don't worry about it. Right. It allowed you to travel across various hotels <laughs> and motels throughout our great countryside <laughs> in a Cadillac. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, there's like another character named Quilty in the book two or something. So it's kind of confusing. I could be making that up. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so they talk about Quilty like fairly early on, but then there's a scene where he can, becomes like increasingly more prevalent, and then Humbert Humbert starts to realize that this person is kind of on their trail. He's like, right, because he thinks that like at first uh, uh, he like thinks it's the cops that are following yeah, him. Yeah, he thinks it's like, like oh shit, they're, they're onto me. Like, yeah, like I'm a pervert. They know that I'm <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> they they realize yeah. they finally figure out that I essentially. <laughs> Kidnapped this woman, yeah. young girl, not woman. Not even a woman. Kidnapped yet. this girl. No, not yet a girl. Not yet a woman. What's that? So, and then 
where where does Quilty come in? Like where what is his you know, like where does he come into meeting like Lolita? Like how do they do they describe that in the book at all? They do kind of in retrospect. Um I think they're stopped in some town at some point and she just kind of disappears. I think. See, this is, uh, this is where I'm really terrible at like, remembering certain details in books, even though something I even just Even though you, you just I read this like a week ago in, in preparation for this conversation. <laughs> you're not even going to grill me what it's about. I got to come in, coming in with my facts. Um, I know. Uh, so she dips like she should have, you know, way back. Um, but you don't realize at the time, like, what happens until later in the book when, when Humbert confronts Quilty. And he okay, because there was the same thing in the movie, and it was very confusing. Yeah. Because um, it, was, it was just, they were being followed, and then she, Lolita, got sick. Right, right. Went into right. the hospital? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. That happened. She goes into the yeah. hospital, uh-huh. and then the next day is like, oh, yeah, like her like her Uncle Gustav checked her <laughs> yeah, out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so totally, it was like, in my mind, it was like she just like hops on her bicycle and rides away, and like, right. she's gone, but that's not what happened. So it's not that she she escaped. She got a... Well, I guess she... Cause in that point, again, it's like portraying her as a willing participant, even though essentially she's just getting she's trading one like lecherous perverted mm-hmm. adult man mm-hmm. for another one but then at that point who the fuck else does she have she doesn't have right, anyone she has no one else and that's what's kind of interesting about it is like she's like so young and she has sort of no like she doesn't probably have a lot of agency over over what she's doing no. like it's kind of like she's just like what a what a what else do I do? My mom's dead. Right. <laughs> like I, I'm fucking 13 <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Like, cause the book only takes, or the, it only takes place over the series, like a couple years. Right. Um, a couple road trips, a couple road trips, a short stint. Uh, he, he's, he, in some mental facilities. That's part of it too. He's like, so they don't go into that. They didn't go into that yeah, in, really. into the movie there's, there's, at all. I mean, you could tell he's obviously he's fucking crazy yeah. and he's obviously sick if he's, you know, only in love with 12 year olds <laughs> um but also they don't ever sh- talk about him being like like that with any other young girls it's just her uh yeah i mean it describes other like encounters he has with other women it does it's not super obviously like, it starts with like the girl that he loved that yeah. she died by again just a real quick the same thing with the mom it was like she was there and then she just died mm-hmm. like it was just like real abrupt just get to like the point, what they were trying to say. which they do that again at up. the end um which i guess we'll get to so lolita leaves with who you find out later to be Quilty, Quilty. <laughs> which is again the names in this thing are just fucking great, like well, Humbert, right, right. Quilty. Um, I guess it was because it was the forties. I don't know. Were people named shit like that back in the day? I think he is making these names up. Oh, so I don't know that. I think. I mean, obviously, like Humbert, Humbert. That's. A I name didn't read the book. Um, he he talks about like you know because he's he's kind of writing this in prison essentially. I think it's like. Which they don't really, they don't go over that yeah. in the movie version. Like the movie starts with like a clip of like him at the end. He's like driving in a car, kind of like bloody, and then at times he pops in and narrates it, but it's really inconsistent. Mm. Um, so you don't get that like, which I did when I read like the Wikipedia page about the book, which is where most of my knowledge of it comes from. Is the <laughs> Wikipedia is synopsis um, is that yeah he's writing this to like the he's essentially it's like he's writing this to the jury right exactly because of what i guess we're about to get to so what happens after lolita will say leaves him for what happens like what does he do next how's that story neatly wrapped up so he goes back to where they originally came from which i can't remember now where they were living before they started their big journey um, 
And I think he's there for like a couple of years. And mm-hmm. he's just like this whole time, like, Lolita, where are you? Um, you know, he's still sort of obsessing over her and just has no idea where she is. And then she reaches out to him because she's pregnant married she's at this point like you forget like i totally forgot in the book she's still like 16 years old right by the end of the book i think like she the oldest she gets is like 17 yeah yeah because yeah. he goes, like, he goes to she like writes him a letter and she goes he goes he to goes, see her mm-hmm. so he goes to see her and she's married to to somebody named dick right just um, an average dude just an average joe who has uh, hopefully no idea how fucked up this yeah. whole story is <laughs> He just thinks it's a young woman too, though, because like you're still not. Yeah, yeah, still problematic. Mm -hmm. Um, Even for the 1940s, still super problematic. Um, So yeah, she writes him a letter. She's pregnant, and what she wants money. She wants money. Yeah. So he goes and, and visits with her, and there's this whole scene you know and i think in his head he's kind of like come with me but right. i think he sort of resigned himself at that point to like which is weird if because it comes across like he's just only i guess attracted to like young girls but he still wants her to come with him mm-hmm. even at that point which is why like i don't know if he's just attracted to young girls or if it's just this one well i think i think like both oddly enough like lolita is sort of the love of his life which is why like it could be argued that this is like a great love story. Right. Not the story of just a serial just rapist. A, no. <laughs> Which is what I would call Although it. Although what he's doing in his free time, I have no idea. Like maybe that's true. They don't know. Raping a bunch of... And when he girls. goes and finds her, that's when he finally realizes, like, everything that happened mm-hmm. and puts it all together. Mm-hmm. Like, with, uh... It's fucking Quilty. Quilty, Quil- yeah. This. Yeah, exactly. She... I think she, like, kind of tells him what actually went down. So then he goes to find Quilty. Mm-hmm. That's when, dun dun dun, the murder happens. The murder happens. The murder. Which, which is the, why he's in jail, not because he's... He, he's not in jail because he's, he, he <laughs> spent like two years raping a minor. Yeah. He's in jail for murdering Quilty, Quilty mm-hmm. who was a trafficker of child porn? Was he? Is that the that was that was uh, that was the impression that I got. Like she went with Quilty, she You're loved. Right, right, right. Something she else. was like, because she tells him, like when at least in the movie he goes to see her and she's like, yeah, Quilty was like the only man I ever loved, and he was like, oh, I was like, damn, yeah. that was fucking cold. Yeah, that was cold, that was Lolita. cold Lolita. Good for you. Um, if there should have been a murder, Lolita should have murdered him. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, she went with uh, Quilty. Quilty wanted her to like do porno and she was right, like nah right. she's like that. i'm not about that porn life yeah i just want i want you and you right and, you. and he's like i do a lot of mescaline and my dick doesn't work yeah. um so this isn't gonna work out <laughs> that was basically the impression that the movie gave yeah. um yeah. and then yeah because he's a playwright yeah. he's a artist <laughs> he's a sensitive <laughs> artist he's a sensitive type, artist type. <laughs> So, in the end, Humbert Humbert goes to confront Quilty. What happens? How does it end? Uh, it's actually kind of a funny scene because he like goes and finds Quilty and kills him, and then he goes downstairs and there's like all these people. And is Quilty like and, uh, cognizant? Like when? Because in the movie, like Quilty was fucked up. Like when he goes to see him, like Quilty's like clearly high or drunk. Yeah, yeah, he's, or some he's, shit like yeah, that. He's obviously like lives a very lavish and like doesn't lifestyle. care. Right. And like, and but, even, yeah, he's just like, oh. and he's even like, oh, you can come I think, stay I, here. Yeah, like, I, I got like, young oh, girls. Yeah. Like, if that's what you're into, like, you're, you could come live with me in my fucking creepy house. And like, I think he thought he was just like another one of his friends. Like, he just didn't even like realize that this was something. Yeah, he's like said he was like an like an electrician or like somewhat something. He thought yeah. he was like. So he didn't know who the fuck he was and didn't remember Lolita, which was fucked up because Lolita is like very important to Humbert, Mm -hmm. but like clearly meant nothing to to like this dude. Yeah. Although he like followed them. Although, yeah, he he did follow them across the country from (laughs) lavish motel to regular motel. Yeah. Um, And then. So it's funny because then, yeah, he like 
kills him and then goes downstairs and there's all these people there and he just walks in and he just says, I just killed Clark Quilty. And somebody asks him if he wants a beer. Right, like no one even cares. <laughs> yeah. no one, like... I think they just didn't realize that it was like legit. Like they were just like, oh, fuck. Right, ha <laughs> ha. And then, yeah, ends up. So anyway, that's, um, yeah. So that's, that's the story. That's, that's, the story. that's Lolita. That's Lolita. Um, it was fucked up. It had me fucked up. I, it made me feel wrong when I was reading about it. And it made me feel wrong when I watched it. <laughs> I gotta say. Well, I can't, okay. um, uh, to speak to that. Yeah. I, I didn't really remember the book that well. I realized when I read it a second time and I didn't remember just how, uh, descriptive some parts of it were. <laughs> Um, I don't know if they portray that in the, the movie. It's not, like I said before, it's not, like, overly pornographic. No. But you still, like, read it, and you're like, man, am I, like, a freak? Is this, like, am I a gross monster for... Yeah, and I read, like, a lot this? of, like, reviews, and they're like, uh, everyone said it was pornography, but, like, it's not actually pornographic. There's no, like, explicit, like... No. Scenery or, like, descriptions, really. But it's super fucking perverted. Yeah. Like, it's definitely, like, disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not straight-up porn, and, like, if you wanted it to be porn, you would be disappointed right. if you read it, which is what uh, uh, the original Atlantic Review said about it. <laughs> if you're looking um, for porn, um, don't come here. It said, there's not a single obscene term in Lolita, and aficionados of erotica are likely to find it a dud. <laughs> well, it's it says, easy to <laughs> look into read pornographic material about a young girl is... It's, it's going to be disappointed if they read They're going to be disappointed, but also, like, maybe they should reevaluate their fucking life. Something. Um, do you feel like there was, like, a moral to the story? Because Nabokov in interviews said that there was no moral. He's like, no, no, I'm an artist. This is what I wrote. Like, basically, like, he, like, maintained, even though it also came out later that a lot of it was influenced by a true story, which he denied. He said, this is just what came out of me. Um, but there was like a true story in the United States around the similar time or around the same time with like real similar themes to it that like he had clippings about uh, and that he even at one point mentions it in the book. Like it says, uh, Humbert finds himself in the leader's hometown many years later and asks himself, had I done to Dolly perhaps what Frank LaSalle, a 50 year old mechanic had done to 11 year old Sally Horner mm -hmm. in 1948. Which that story is, yeah, in 1948, there was an 11-year-old girl named Sally Horner who stole a notebook from a Woolworths in Camden, New Jersey. And this dude, Frank Horner, was in the store, confronted her about it outside, said he was an FBI agent. And then the next day, confronted her again and said he had to take her to Atlantic City. And then he kidnapped her and drove her around the country. And they stayed in different hotels for like two years while he repeatedly raped her. Uh, and then eventually she escaped and he was arrested and sentenced and then died in prison. And then she actually was 11 when she got abducted. And then she ended up dying in a car accident when she was 15. Which is also similar, I thought, at the end of Lolita, it was really weird. They, like, cut scene, like, credits, and they're like, Lolita dies during childbirth. Oh, that doesn't happen in the book. That doesn't? Okay, because I was like, man, that'd be fucked up. No. Like, she That's goes weird. through all of this. It, it was just like a, like a clip on the screen. Yeah, it just was, text. it was like, yeah, like, it was like, what's his name? He died in prison in 1950. Lolita died during childbirth it in 1950. Like a very weird addendum. Yeah. <laughs> just add this um, thing. So he like denied that it was based off this story, but like there, I found like a shitload of articles. It's like highly reminiscent. Of a shitload God of articles God. that were like, no, it was definitely like the even including like one by like his wife's biographer who was like, no, like this yeah. was like, and he just apparently only had a writer's interest in them fats, but right, um, right, and he was inspired by that ape. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I did not fucking understand that either. Um, <laughs> that was truly inspired. It had nothing to do with any actual events. But do you feel like there was like a moral to the story? Um, no, I guess no? I would agree. I don't. Yeah. Do you don't, think that Humbert loved Lolita? Like, actually loved I do. her? You do. I do. I think um, you asked me what I like about this book, and I 
I have to say, like, the beginning and the end, the opening and the ending of this book are just, like, easily my favorite. Uh, just all the fucked up shit in the middle. The first, <laughs> I, like, I, just, I just want to read the first paragraph and the last paragraph over and over again. Because it's okay. beautiful. Like, I read, like, excerpts of it in the prose. It's, it's, it's right. beautifully written. And, like, it's for sure I understand why it's... Uh, like, it has just, like, the most memorable opening line... I think of any book I've read, and then the ending, like you. Like hard. what is what? Okay, what is the opening line then? What is? Are you ready? I, oh, I'm ready for Dramatic this. I don't. Ending. Yeah. Oh, please. Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins. I guess it's multiple lines. My sin, my soul, Lolita, the tip of the tongue, taking a trip of three steps down the palate to tap at three on the teeth. Lolita, and then it like, goes on from there. She was good. low, playing low in the morning. Oh, God. <laughs> Standing four feet ten in one sock. Oh, God. See, that's what you have me fucked <laughs> up. Like, she was so beautiful, standing four feet she ten like a child. She was Dolly at school. She was Dolores on the dotted line. But in my arms, she was always Melita. Um, but then, and then the ending. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's not really, though. It's just the way he ends the book. I... I've never read anything like it. And I think it's really hard to like close out a book. Would you yeah. agree? Like, can you name any book off the top of your head where you were just like, that was like the best way to end that? Like, there's nothing. Um, I can only think of like one, which, so. Yeah, no. exactly. Like, it's hard to, but this, like, I remember reading this and specifically just being like, fuck, like, there's no other way you can yeah. like, round that out. Um, so yeah, read that. Read the ending. Do you need the whole the whole paragraph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I think the listeners spoilers, deserve spoilers, it. Spoilers, <laughs> spoilers. Yeah, in case we didn't already spoil the entire fucking story. <laughs> okay. Uh, thus, neither of us is alive when the reader opens this book. But while the blood still throbs through my writing hand, you are still as much part of blessed matter as I am, and I can still talk to you from here to Alaska. Be true to your dick. That's her husband. <laughs> Do not let other fellows touch you. Do not talk to strangers. I hope you will love your baby. I hope it will be a boy. That husband of yours, I hope, will always treat you well, because otherwise my specter shall come at him like black smoke, like a demented giant, and pull him apart nerve by nerve. And do not pity CQ. One had to choose between him and HH, and one wanted HH to exist at least a couple of months longer, so as to have him make you live in the minds of later generations. I am thinking of Oryx and Angels, The Secret of Durable Pigments, Prophetic Sonnet, The Refuge of Art, and this is the un- only immortality you and I may share, my little Dita. Fuck. It's good, right? It's good. That's good. Um, yeah, still a piece of shit. Humbert, <laughs> no, Humbert, it's, still it's, a piece of shit. No, no, but you do. But you read that and you do genuinely feel like, okay, this man, like. This man loved this, this, young, this girl. young girl. Yeah. Yeah. But that's it, it's who like, even at the end of the book is still a young. She's seven. She's like not right. even eighteen yet. But that like sparks a whole other conversation of like I don't know what where like what role did she play in it? And you don't. And that's part of what's interesting about this book too is like he's very unreliable narrator, right? Like you have no idea. Like he could be just making all this shit up. You have no idea. That's true. And then he talks about himself a lot. And he talks about like. He's like, I'm just the most handsome man, and people fall at my knees because I'm so attractive. And and you don't know that, though. He could just be a dog. You don't know. Right, he right, yeah. He Humbert Humbert. <laughs> like, <laughs> Basically, you can't trust a word that this man yeah. is saying. <laughs> so the whole book could just be like a total lie, and you wouldn't know. You never know Lolita's perspective. It's interesting. That Food is. for thought. Food for thought for... What is the only convincing love story of our century, <laughs> according to Vanity Fair? I can't stop reading on the cover of uh, your copy of Lolita. It's intensely lyrical and wildly funny as well. So it that part I can get, though. That part yeah. I, I can understand. Um, and it was, at least in the movie version, it was funny. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a romp or anything, but it was it was pretty funny. You know, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't just like. <laughs> You know, yeah. um, fuck. 
So, I don't know. Maybe I changed your mind on this text. Maybe, maybe you changed my mind. I might read it. I'll put it on my list. <laughs> I'll put it on. It's not going to go very high on my list, but I will. I don't know, and I had read a few different. Um, right under Twilight. Oh. Um, <laughs> I had read a few different uh, reviews <laughs> where people were like, I couldn't read it, or it was very hard for me to read, or it took me a lot of. Like, there was one person that was like, it took me like three tries to be able to get through it because it made me so disgusted by the end of... There's like a, a graphic scene where he's basically describing she's sitting on his lap and yeah. he's like jerking off or something at the same time, but like she doesn't know, yeah. which I don't get how that works, but yeah. <laughs> sounds pretty fucking disgusting. And a lot of people are like, once I read that, like I dipped out on the book, like, but you didn't. What, is it, what does that say about me? I, <laughs> I had... I don't know. I don't know. So, um, any any final thoughts about about the book? Any final? Um, should people read it? Do you think it's a great? Of course, people should read it. You think people should read it? I I understand uh, hesitance to read it. Obviously, like the subject matter is very bizarre. Um, but I don't know. Shouldn't art like make you uncomfortable? Can it? Eh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean this made me very uncomfortable. <laughs> if you're not into it, obviously that's that's right. But I think there's a lot to be gotten out of it. That sounded weird. Gotten out of it. It did, but no, even just the way it's written. Like I said, I get it. It's it, it, the it's beautiful. It, this lyric and and the I do believe it has has value in that. It just fucked me up. Yeah. It just fucked me up. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so you read any other good books right now? You got any anything? What you any, any other recommendations? Or just what you just gonna read Lolita over and over? What else? Are you, what are you reading right now? Um, that's not Lolita. <laughs> I'm reading All the Pretty Horses by Cormac McCarthy. How's that working out for you? I've never read that one either. It's good. It's good. Um, yeah, it's it's. I've read a few of his books already, and they're like usually pretty dense. This one's a little. A little lighter fare, I guess. It's, okay. All right. So it's it's been it's been good to me so far. Um, yeah, the horses are pretty. The horses are pretty. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Is it about horses? Or? There are the there horses, are there are horses yeah. in it. It's yeah. a horse. Also, there text. Was, you know, there's a movie. Uh, so if you ever want to talk about that book, you can, <laughs> you can just watch the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. you talk about it. I'm glad you watched the movie because you remembered things that I didn't remember even just from. Yeah, I watched it with uh, Liz, who was equally as yeah. disgusted by it as I was. I'm impressed that you guys have like, decided to still be my friend. No, no, I get it. I get it. It's fucking weird. But, you know. <laughs> it's not, and like I said, you know, I have a lot of other books that I would love to talk about sometime. This one just... This one just like, when I asked you, you were like, Well, you, boom. you asked and I had just picked it up to reread it, so it just uh, seemed like good timing. Okay. Right, so like maybe next it time it'll like, be oh, like, it'll be fresh in my mind. Obviously, it wasn't as fresh as it could right. have been, but but yeah. Do you have any final thoughts on it? Um, I think despite what he said, he definitely probably was attracted to young girls because I don't know how you, you would. Mean yeah, 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 like the the author, the actual author, which it's hard, uh, and I think it's sometimes hard when you read a book to remember that, like, one, like, just watching this and reading, like, the reviews of it, it's hard to remember that it's fiction mm -hmm. and not something real, because you really hate this dude. Mm -hmm. And you also have to remember that, like, the author is not the narrator. Like, the character is the narrator. So, like... I still think Nabokov was, like, fucked up. He mm -hmm. had to be, because, like, why would you, like, what, this is the hill that you chose to die on. Right, was like, right. Like, like, Well, like, I mean, not a lot of people would be like, I want to write, like, the Great American Road Trick novel. Let me just throw some, Let like, me just throw in some, some, some pedophilia, some pedophilia for yeah. you. <laughs> um, well, how can I right. tie this all together? Right, like, he could have probably just wrote, like, a great book about a dude that, like, goes around catching fucking butterflies. Yeah, like, and, know, like, or, really like, a, just, like, a like, Travels with Charlie, John Steinbeck sort of thing. Where just he's, like, driving literally the country with his dog, you know? Any other thing but a dude driving around the country repeatedly raping a 12 And that is definitely, like, reading the book, I wasn't, like, 
Oh, the thing that stands out to me is that he obviously really, <laughs> he really hotels. fucking loves hotels. <laughs> he just loves classic Americana hotel culture. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like describing the thread count and like, um, no, I mean, I think it's like, I'm sure it's worthwhile. Like I said, I might read it. I don't, it's not very high on That's fair. my list That's right fair. now. Um, but I mean, I don't think it's like without merit. Yeah. I guess. I'm just happy to be able to, to talk about, well, any book, really. I'll talk about any book, but I'm happy to talk about, like, something that, for whatever reason, obviously resonated with me. Yeah. Which is a weird word to use, considering this Considering the fucking... It really resonated. <laughs> I don't want anyone to think, think that the wrong right. way. Like I said, I won't uh, use your real name. <laughs> I don't know who you are. But, uh, yeah, you know, reading it, like, ten years ago and then still having it, like, stand out. There must be some reason for that. So. Yeah, no, and I mean it's like I, I could see why it would, yeah. like it would it would stick out to you. Yeah. All right. Cool. I think that's the thing. That's, the that's thing. it. Thank it. you. We finally, uh, we finally did it. Yeah. Thank you for uh, taking part of this experiment with me and telling me about this just fucking terrible book. <laughs> <laughs> It's just fucking awfully, but great, but awful. Good, but awful. Good, but awful. Totally problematic. This book, nor the movie version I saw was made in 97, would never be made today. today. I don't think. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it, maybe there's some commentary there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> We can, it's we can fucked really up. We could we could we could dig deep into this I for really a long time. Any it's okay. I don't think there's going to be that many of them. Okay. So it's mostly <laughs> going to be the two of us. <laughs> All right. Whatever. This will take off. Actually. And uh, now a word from our sponsors. Topo Chica. Topo Chica, <laughs> and the Michigan State Parks. <laughs>